Uh, join us now to talk about that, Senator Bob Corker. He's chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, member of the Budget uh, and uh, Banking Committees. And, uh, Senator, it's great to have you on today. Thanks for joining us. So um, good to be with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You know, when they talked to the president uh, yesterday, he, you know, when they, you know, everyone wants, everyone loves to talk about this other stuff. They're like, well, what about, yeah. you know, what about this? Is that going to change their votes on, and, and, yeah. you know, I want to ask you, would, would something like what we've all witnessed in the past week or two, would that ever affect what you do uh, when it comes to tax reform or, or your vote? I, I can't imagine it would. No, absolutely not. Look, this tax reform is our agenda. It's the Republican Senate agenda. And, Joe, it would be like uh, somebody in your listening audience uh, representing their company, sitting across the table from someone they may have a low regard for, but are they going to do something that's going to damage their company because of that? Absolutely not. I mean, this is something that can be great for our nation. I'm all in. I think you know it was a corker toomey toomey corker compromise in the Budget Committee that's allowing this to go forward. And now we begin the tough work. This will be the biggest tax rewrite since 1986. It is a tremendous undertaking. And Joe, I think what's happened is because of what Toomey and I agreed to and the Budget Committee passed out and then passed out on the floor, I think people have been focused on the trillion and a half dollars. People don't realize, and they shouldn't, because they're busy building companies and doing other things, that much of that was a parliamentary maneuver to just free us for tax reform. So let me walk through the numbers, because I think this is what people are going to be focused on over the next uh, three or four weeks. We, there's a trillion and a half that we passed out of the Budget Committee. Half a trillion of that was just to align us to current policy. So that's just something to make us, to, to allow us to do uh, tax policy working off the policy base we have today. There was a trillion dollar number in there to allow for some dynamic scoring, assuming it actually occur it happens. The meat of this, let me put it a different way, the spinach of this is the four trillion dollars, the four trillion dollars in loophole closings, credit closings, uh, simplifying the code that needs to take place. So people should look at it this way. There's $5 trillion that we have here. A trillion of it could, could be made up with dynamic scoring. It's got to prove out. But 80% of it, $4 trillion of it, is actually closing loopholes. And when I was on your program last, I don't think people understood that that's what's really happening here is tax reform. And so, look, this is where the real, and, and look, I'm all for every penny of the four trillion, but we've got to hang tough to get there. And the fact is, it worries me when I see people dealing away things that we're going to need. I mean, we're going to get into the quick of special interest groups. We're going to be dealing with things that are, people are going to just go nuts over, but it's what it's going to take to have the biggest tax rewrite since 1986. I'm all in. I want, the, I want the dynamic scoring to prove out, but it only proves out if you do this significant tax reform that we have underway. It's, and I don't think everyone understands. People that, when you no. talk, the, when you talk the four trillion, they're like, well, let's make it even, let's assume even more dynamic scoring. But under budgetary constraints, you're stuck with this. You're stuck with a, right. a, a trillion and a half. It's not something that you decided on. It's, it's the way it is. So the four trillion's gotta come out it's got to come out one way or another and right. do these guys and it, what's interesting is i don't even think you're not worried about schumer and the democrats you're worried about business lobbying you're worrying about i mean they're going to come after you guys on every one of these sacred cows and you the the guys that are going to vote for this intestinal fortitude that they've never been able to demonstrate in the past i don't think at least not this current group have they it, joe this Again, I look in people's eyes and uh, you see fear. I, I, just, I see fear, and <laughs> and this is what I've been trying to say the whole time. And last time I was on, again, I don't think it was dawning on people what is really happening here. But to get rates, corporate rates to 20 percent, deal with the territorial issues, deal with the individual rate issues, deal with the 25 percent pass-through issue, you have got to get the full four trillion dollars. And and this is going to be interesting. I'm ready. I love it. I love it. And, and yet, I, I, and I hope we're going to be successful. But when I see, you know, maybe the president the other day, and again, I don't want to start a dispute, or I see House members talking about fiddling with something, 
you cannot be dealing away things. Two things happen. Number one, you erode that $4 trillion. But secondly, if Group C, Joe, that, that you're willing to deal something away if they raise enough cane, the whole thing's going to start right. falling apart. Do you hence, understand? I mean, we've got to hang tough. Hence, you're worried about the president. Uh, it, 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 since it's being done in Congress, that, uh, those comments from you the other day, and you know, then you see the 401k comments, you, you want to, before you give anything away, you, wanna, uh, you, you want this to be written to know what you need to fight for. Is that, have I got that? You've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you got to have the whole cafeteria of the tax code even 401ks there. you need everything you, on the you table. gotta have everything out there you may okay. you may decide it's not something you want to do but you've got to add up to four trillion what i know is i had a great meeting the other day with our tax writers who I have a tremendous respect for and i'm up under the hood because of the role i've played in this and will continue to play but we're adding up all these tough tough measures and we're at about 3.6 trillion mm -hmm. getting that additional 400 is I don't want to say it on this program because I don't want to hurt our chances for what we need to do, but it is going to be incredibly painful. But that's what we need to do to simplify the code, which is what we've told people, to get the dynamic growth we're talking about, but importantly, get these business rates down to where we can be competitive with the industrialized world. Real quickly, Senator Corker, two, two yeah. issues. First of all, you're at $3.6 trillion, and does that include the 401k options? Does that I, include I don't, the I don't want to get, I'm not going to get into what it does and doesn't include. I'm sorry, Becky, I'd I love to, that. but I, I, want, I want our tax writers to have all that they need to do working together. There's, there's some base erosion issues they've got to work through with the business community. Uh, there are all kinds of individual rate issues they've got to work through. I want them to have the headroom. That's why, by the way, I agreed to do what I did on the budget committee. I mm -hmm. am a deficit hawk. I do not want this to add to the deficit, but I believe if we do it right, it won't. Okay, well, that, that, but, let me, let me okay, ask you to clarify okay. another issue. Okay. I won't go through okay. piece by piece because I understand your okay. overall strategy right. here. What I heard at the top of this interview was you say, I'm all in uh, in regards to tax reform. Yeah. There has been so much speculation that you are going to be a holdout, not just because of the, the bickering back and forth that's been taking place, but more importantly because of what you just said about being a deficit hawk, that you've yeah. said you won't go, you won't vote for anything that adds a dime to the deficit. And that's I guess correct. That's that, where I'm we come there. down to it. I, you're, you're all in, but only if you're not doing this on dynamic scoring, if this is something that really doesn't add to the deficit. And so that, I, yeah. I guess, my, what I'm trying to parse is I'm all in. What does that mean? Look, I'm all in in closing $4 trillion of loopholes. I'm all in for locking arms and having the intestinal fortitude to do it. And, and Becky, if we do it right and we do the corporate things we're talking about, I believe we'll get the dynamic score that is necessary to close that trillion dollars that I was talking about on the front end. Mm -hmm. I believe we'll get it. It's got to be proven. We've got to have appropriate scoring. But, but you know, I was willing in the budget committee as a deficit hawk to give that trillion dollars headroom. It's got to prove out. It won't prove out if we don't do the things I was just talking about. It just will not. And so, again, the two really uh, interlock with each other and work with each other. I, I believe if we will lock arms, be tough, close these loopholes, do the things we need to do on the business side, I believe we can get the growth, but it's got to prove itself out, and scores, people who are, you know, legitimate scores will do that. But I, I think we've got a chance as we, if we cut the $4 trillion. Yeah, Senator, the, the, yeah. Uh, the individual sides and, e and even the pass-through, I, I think in the past you, you've mentioned that the, the, what we really want, the holy grail here is, is corporate tax reform. Would it be That's easy? what I believe, yeah. Would it be easier if some of that other stuff wasn't included because then you got to pay for that too or is it politically impossible to do it without being able to sell it as a as a tax cut yeah. for individuals is that why we're is, is it like pr it is or, look i, so I mean I'm, I, I, I can't believe i'm gonna say this on your program and get the kind of incoming i'm getting ready to get <laughs> by saying this okay but some of the things we're doing uh, i'm sorry are ridiculous I'm sorry, it's just, but we live in a political world and 
not going to drive one ounce of economic growth, but it's, you know, it's unfortunately well, what you have to do to pass a tax bill. We could take a lot of this off and throw it in the trash can right, but what, and it, make, it, it, easy, make right. it easier and actually do something that grows our economy and increases right, wages. You could, yes, you could yes, go to 15. Yeah. You could go to 15 without some of this other stuff. And by, including, by paying for the on, on corporate and by paying for this other stuff, you may end up having to settle for 25, and then, you know, it's almost like... Well, then it falls apart, Joe. I, I don't think... I, I think that once you begin that... Here's what I, I agree with. We've been saying in our caucus. We can do something really big, hang tough, eat the spinach, fight off the special interest, and do something great for our country, and there'll be just as much pain there as there will be doing something small and focusing only on a few special interests. Both are going to be painful. Why don't we do something great for our nation? But when you start talking about adjusting the corporate rate okay. up, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I think things start falling apart. Um, I think you've analyzed it right. We're doing a lot of things that aren't pro-growth. It's unfortunate. Okay. It, it, it's a buying off of people to pass tax reform. I hate to say it that way, but that's unfortunately okay. where we yeah, are. I can't believe We'd you're saying that we, either. Right. No, I, I'm <laughs> kidding. But uh, anyway, we got it. We got. 10 seconds. Uh, is there any chance for a detente with you and the president? Can you answer that in 10 seconds? What, what, what should we be expecting? Yeah, look, I don't, uh, one of the things I don't think about when I wake up in the morning is, is, is what's that, happening uh, over there. I, okay, look, I, got, I got a job to do, and I've been hired to do it. I've got 14 months left, and I'm going to go out with afterburners trying to make good things happen. So. Okay. Senator? Great uh, having you on. Thanks for coming on today. And uh, I think we, we kept it where we wanted it to be, just in terms of I, I, we need to know these things. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be tough medicine. And um, there's going to be, you guys got to have some, you know, feet of clay aren't going to make it this time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.